Hi everybody, Levi Clay here, and today we are going to look at setting yourself up for success when it comes to learning to sight read on the guitar. And we're gonna do that by dealing with positional based playing and helping you to get your head around keys and how to use those in order to practice your fretboard navigation much more effectively. This lesson is brought to you by conjunction with my friends over at piano.com, a website, in fact, the best website I've found for learning the piano, which of course goes hand in hand with the concept of sight reading. Check out the link in the description and you can get a free month's trial by using my link. Thanks very much. On with the lesson. So the concept here is very, very simple. When compared to the piano, sight reading on the guitar is quite a tricky beast indeed. And the reason for that is we essentially have six little pianos. We can find our notes in lots of different places. If you see the note C when reading uh, on, the, on the stave, you could play that C note here. You could also play that C note here. You could play that C note here. There are lots of ways that you can play these notes. Now, of course, if you see two consecutive notes, C followed by an E, well, you could play C and then E, or C and E, or C and E. You might even play C and E. There's lots of different ways that you could play those notes. So working out how you are going to play something on the guitar can actually be extremely tricky. Now, the way I got around this was via help from my uh, my technique teacher and my sight reading teacher in music school, which was a gentleman by the name of Ian Scott, fabulous, fabulous teacher. The concept that Ian presented was having almost like a master position for ourselves to use as a basic guideline for where we are going to finger the notes of the scales that we're playing. So I'm gonna walk you through those today and help you to see how we can use keys, not just as ways of uh, writing music in, in diff with different sounds, but as ways of helping us practice our fretboard navigation. So the first thing that we will need to look at today is the notes and the fingering for the C major scale. Extremely simple scale, of course, just the white notes on the piano, uh, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Now, of course, I always talk about this idea of the guitar being a very shape-based instrument. So this is a shape that we are looking to learn, but unlike your usual guitar playing lessons and the types of things that you've been doing for years and years, if you're looking to sight read, you need to be learning the actual notes. So a lot of attention needs to go into the actual notes that we are playing here. So I'm gonna play this fingering for you nice and slow, check the diagram on screen, and then we will talk you through uh, some of our options on it. So C major scale, C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C. There's no accidentals in there, no sharps, no flats. So my basic fingering for this would immediately be The first thought that you might have when looking at that is, well, why not the open position? Now that, of course, is a position that you can learn to sight read in, and it was one that I initially learned to sight read in, but the answer to that is quite simple. First of all, we want to have the ability to be able to move up the neck if we so choose. But secondly, the guitar is notorious for being able to pick out the sound of an open string. You can really hear the sound of an open B string when compared to a fretted B. And we always have to deal with this fact that the thinner a string gets, the thinner the note sounds. So if you always see the note E on the staff and you always read that as an open E string, it's worth considering that the ninth fret on the G string, for example, can sound a little bit more in line with the things that you are playing. It won't jump out to you so much as playing these open strings. So generally speaking, as a rule, when I'm sight reading, I'm trying to avoid open strings. This position helps us to get around that. Now, when practicing this, as I say, it's very important to focus on reading out the notes to yourself as you're doing it. C, D, E, F, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, A. You wanna be able to play the scale and stop at any point and say that this note is G. This is an F. Here's a B. There's an A. You could even uh, focus on picking a note. Let's say we're gonna land on the note B, then the note G, then the note F. So I'm gonna play. There's my B. There's my G. And there's my F. Just really focusing on finding those notes. It can be tricky. This will take time, but it's incredibly important to set yourself up for the next step. 
Before dealing in that next step, I just want to introduce an additional position shift that I will often do when I am playing this. It fits nicely under the fingers and it's going to help us get a little bit more range out of the position. I would consider this, this to really kind of be the master position for myself. So uh, it looks like this. <laughs> Now lots of people will say, well why don't we just read in this area of the neck? Or here. All of these are options and in the long run you are looking to learn these things. But the answer is very simple. The starting note C, generally speaking I find this is the best sounding C compared to, which can be a little bit woolly to my ears. tone is extremely important, getting the right sound is very important. So this fingering uses a shift on the B string to get a little bit more range. Shifting on the last note. And we don't want to hear that slide, we don't want... We want to... Uh, a good pick definition between each one of these notes. Because of course, we'll, when you sight read, when you're reading something, people want to hear the notes, not the technique. It's really important that you're, if the technique is telling you to play with a slide, then of course you play with a slide, but if it's not there, don't introduce it. So now you've spent some time getting to grips with this C major scale, this basic C major scale. The next thing that we have to talk about is keys. Now keys are the most important thing, at least they were for me, in getting to grips with being able to understand uh, reading. Now key signatures, if you think about learning to read a piece of music, you may have seen some of these key signatures at the start of a piece of music. And when you look at these, well, these are exactly what the name would suggest. People don't think about the word key. In, a, in the true sense of the word. A key is something that unlocks something else. So a key unlocks a door. When it comes to playing uh, music, a key signature unlocks the information. It tells us what notes are in a given piece of music. So I will never play the note B if I'm reading something that has a key signature of F because the key signature tells me that there is a B flat. So I won't play B naturals, I'll play B flats. Now, this would be very confusing if you just did what I did when I first started to learn to read, which was I just learned to read in the key of C, and then any time a new key signature came up, I tried to memorize what the notes were that I had to change, and I was reading and I'd be playing my notes and then looking back at the key signatures to see if I had to correct something. And of course, that was never going to get me where I wanted to be. The secret to learning to do this stuff is really starting to practice using the circle of fifths. The circle of fifths is fantastic for, as a practice tool, using it as a way of organizing your practice so things are, are organized in a, a methodical way. So. Um, uh, I've talked about this. If you go back and look at my video where I talk about learning key signatures, I highly encourage you to go and check that one out if you've not seen it. Very, very useful. But key signatures, extremely useful when you look at, and again, I'm going to mention piano. Uh, when learning to play scales on the piano, you can really see visually how these things work on the piano. And they're a, it's a little bit less obvious on the guitar. So I always recommend that people go and try a little bit of piano. Uh, it's a wonderfully visual instrument. And as I say, this video is brought to you by my friends over at Piano. So link in the description. Please do go and check it out piano.com forward slash levi clay to get 30 days free absolutely free uh, for being a user of my channel so please do go check it out you'll have a great time i'm a user too so once we've got to grips with the key of c our key signature here is no sharps no flats it's all natural notes we want to start going around that circle of fifths. Now, if we start moving around the circle of fifths and introducing sharps into the equation, after the key of C comes the key of G. Now, the key of G contains one sharp, an F sharp. Now, this is really important. We're dealing this in a methodical way. We don't go, well, let's learn C, then C sharp, and then D, then D sharp. Let's go around the circle of fifths. We've gone from just one, uh, sorry, no accidentals, to now just one sharp, an F sharp. And using our master uh, scale position, we can start to think about where that note is found. C, D, E, not F, but F sharp. G, A, B, C, D, E, not F, but F sharp. 
Now I'm starting with a C root note here, but of course you could start this with the note G. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp. G, A, B, C. You could continue on if you wanted to. When we do that, we're learning where the note F sharp is found. It can be found here on the fourth fret of the D string or the seventh fret of the B string. Sometimes you might play it on the second fret of the high E string, but again, coming back to that idea of open strings, I find that the lower part of the fretboard on the higher strings does sound a little bit thin, so I tend to avoid this note in favor of this note. So F sharp. Now let's continue around the, the circle of fifths. So after the key of G, we come to the key of D. Now the key of D has two sharps, F and C. So an F sharp and a C sharp. Super, super important that we focus on those, F sharp and C sharp. Well, we already know where the F sharp is. So where is our C sharp gonna be? Let's start on the note D. So if here's my D, we can have D, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. A, sorry, E, F sharp, G, A, B, C sharp, D. Now I'm just kind of playing it in any way I, I like at this stage, but fingering wise, keeping this area, I would probably play. That'd be my way of dealing with the key signature of D learning where that C-sharp is and where the F-sharp is. Very useful to know where they are. Let's go around the circle again. Uh, after the key of D, we have the key of A. There are three sharps in the key of A. And again, it's the same two sharps we've already learned, C-sharp, F-sharp, and C-sharp. And after that, we have a G-sharp, F-sharp, C-sharp, and G-sharp. Let's find those notes. So, key of A, let's start on the note A. A, B, C-sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D, E, F sharp, G sharp, A. Lots of ways that we could finger that. We could start moving up the neck, but really focusing on those accidentals, extremely useful. I'll do one more. If we were to go round the circle of fifths again, we would end up in the key of E. The same three sharps as before, F sharp, C sharp, G sharp, and now we're introducing a D sharp into the equation. If we focus on that, really think about what that means. E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. Knowing that makes reading a lot easier because I'm, I'm getting to grips with the, the scale fingerings. E, F sharp, G sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp, E, F sharp, G sharp. Ask ourselves, is there an A sharp in the key of E? F sharp, father, Charles, C sharp, G sharp, D sharp. There's a D sharp, but there's no A sharp. Okay, so E, F, G, or sorry, E, F sharp, G sharp, A, B, C sharp, D sharp, E. Might play my A here. Now, thinking about the fretboard like this and really dealing in note positions is a bit of a, a departure from how you are used to playing. But learning to read music will be about getting to grips with the fingerings for these keys. We've dealt in four sharp keys here now. I just want to touch on the flat keys, which would be going back to our key of C. No sharps, no flats, no accidentals. All the white keys on the piano and moving around the circle of fifths the other way. So if we go the other way after C, we will find the key of F. It contains one flat, B flat. Not a problem. Let's play it. C. D, E, F, G, A, B flat, C. Also over a C7 chord, of course. Uh, we could go round the circle of flats, circle of flats again, yeah, the, round the other way, adding two flats, B flat uh, and E flat. So this would be the key of B flat major. So starting on my B flat, we've just got a B flat and an E flat to deal in. B flat, 
B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, B flat. And the more you go around this circle, the more you'll start introducing more notes. If we go again, we're on the key of E flat, B flat, E flat, and A flat, four flats. Uh, so E flat, F, G, sorry, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A flat, B flat, C, uh, D, E flat. <laughs> it's hard to do that and just say it without really thinking about the things you're doing. You get the idea though. So this is definitely a complicated subject. And I would encourage you to not try and learn the entire circle of fifths in one sitting. This is going to take time. Spend a day getting really comfortable with the key of C and then just spend some time with one new key. Just learn G, just one sharp. Really get to grips with where that note can be found. From there, it's just about, and we're not looking at actually picking the notes out off the notation at this stage. We're really getting to grips with where notes can be found on our instrument before having to read them from a page. So from there, what you want to do is you just want to randomly write out notes from a given key and then find those notes, okay? So if I was in the key of uh, A, which is three sharps, and this is a skill that you learn, right? S knowing what a key signature is, the key of A, three sharps, F, C, and G. Being able to take random notes from that key and find them for myself. So if I went, uh, let's go uh, B, C sharp, E, G sharp, A. B, C sharp, E, G sharp, A. I can find those notes. B, C sharp, E, G sharp, A. You can just find these notes. Now, of course, in the long run, you, they might be in different registers, different uh, octaves. Um, but just at this stage, we're just trying to find notes. When you're comfortable with this, we can start moving on to the next stage, which is translating the little dots that you see on the page and then finding those on the guitar. I will be back for another lesson on that in the coming month looking at that. Don't worry, it is coming. So last of all, I just want to say a huge thank you to my friends over on Patreon. If you'd like to be like these guys, you can check me out by uh, clicking the link in the description. Support me over there for as little as $1. Gets you access to my private patron-only Facebook group. Uh, you can get involved there, learn a lot of stuff there. You can have private lessons, do all of those sorts of things. Uh, yeah, great way to support the channel. And if that doesn't suit, you can also head on over to Amazon and check out one of my books. That's a great way to support the channel. And then finally, you can also head on over to Piano, link in the description. Please do go and check those guys out. They're absolutely awesome. I love what they're doing and I uh, love their support as well. Thanks for all of the support, guys. It really does mean a lot. If you have any questions about this whatsoever, please do let me know in that comment section below. I am always here reading and hopefully I will have a conversation with y'all soon. Good luck learning your keys and applying them to the guitar and I'll see you for another lesson soon. Laters.